In this video, we will be taking a look at back EMF and why you should be protecting your circuits against back EMF. To explain this better, I drew up this simple little circuit right here, which is commonly used in a lot of my circuits and a lot of other circuits that you will see online. Generally, you will see a relay coil like you see here, and in parallel with the relay coil, you will find a diode hooked up reverse biased, and that's there to protect against the collapsing magnetic field once power is removed from this relay. Now ordinarily if this diode was not here you would have a very high voltage spike could be several hundred volts which would be sent into the collector of the transistor damaging and or destroying the transistor. Now to show you I have a power supply set at 5 volts I have a relay coil, this is a very small one, it only draws around 35 to 40 milliamps to demonstrate how the spikes will look on the oscilloscope. And I have a diode which is not connected into the circuit right now. What I will do later on, once I show you what the spikes look like without the diode, I will add in the diode to show you the difference. Now depending on the size of the inductive load, the motor that you're using, or the coil, which is in this case, and this one draws around 34 milliamps, it's a very small one. If you used a larger coil, you would generate a higher back EMF voltage spike. So we're going to take a look at this one. This coil here will be an excellent demonstration of what's going on in this circuit. And then you should have a better understanding. Now the wire right here, which I will be connecting to the circuit to demonstrate, is going to be coming from this spot right here. That wire would normally connect to the collector of your NPN transistor and then the emitter would go to ground. So let me set up the camera and then I will be touching this to the circuit board to simulate the clicking on and off of the relay and then you could observe the high voltage spikes. Okay the camera is now fixed on the scope. We are using 100 volts per division. Each one of these little markers here is 100 volts going up and I'm using 50 microseconds on the lower division so every little increment along the bottom is 50 microseconds. So what I'm going to do now this is already connected to the plus 5 volt power supply the diode is out of the picture right now it's not included I'm going to touch this wire that you saw a minute ago the red one to ground completing the circuit for the relay coil and then you'll be able to observe the high voltage spikes from the back EMF when the coil powers off. Now the faster you click the relay on and off, the higher the voltage spike. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the coil on just like the transistor's turning it on. I'm going to apply power. All right, there's power. Now when I release, we're on a normal setting, so it's going to do one pass on the oscilloscope. It's not going to continuously run. So when I release the power, you're going to see a maximum voltage spike here in DC, and you'll see the waveform. All right, that was a really good one. That's actually off the scale, the reason why you're not seeing it show up here. Now each one of these is 100 volts, so we're up 100, 200, 3. This is just over 400 volts when I release power from that relay coil. What I'm going to do now is do it again. I'll click on and off. I'll put power on and you can see right here that created a 395 volt spike right there shooting up and granted it's only a very very small time frame the duration of the whole spike is probably 20 microseconds but it's still enough to destroy a transistor or a MOSFET. Let's take a look again that's a shorter one we're at 270 Let's go a couple times on and off. That's another good one. That's off the scale. Let's do it again. That one was only a 51 volt. That's 192. So as you can see, you do get a very high voltage spike when the relay coil's electromagnetic field collapses as the power is cut off from the relay coil. 
Now we're on a 200 volts per division. Let's try this. That was only 64 volt spike. Let me look for a big one that sticks up. Oh, that was a going app, just missed it. All right, that's a pretty good, it's a 745 volt with the rapid clicking shot straight up. Normally while using a circuit like you see right here, it will not be rapidly clicking on and off. It would turn on this relay and then it would turn it off. So you're not gonna have that rapid clicking to cause such high voltage spikes. So I prefer to use a 1N4007 because as you can see the voltage can get very high from the back EMF. And here's a normal on and off. That's 240. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in position this diode. It's going to be a 1N4003, reverse biased. And by using this 1N4003 diode in parallel with the relay coil, reverse biased, what would happen as power is removed from this relay coil, any high voltage spike created by the back EMF collapsing magnetic field would then be directed towards the other side of the coil, effectively shorting out that spike. All right, the diode is now in position. I'm going to do the same test all over again. And this time you will notice there will not be any high voltage spikes. You could look at this right here. This is the voltage, the maximum voltage. We are now set for 20 volts per division and 20 microseconds each division. 5.7. As you can see, all gone. All right, so as you can see, I'm clicking it on and off rapidly. And it's staying around 5, 5.1. Once in a while, you might get a 5, 7, 4, 4. But as you can see, the diode is taking that high voltage spike and canceling it out. This is why it's very important when you design a circuit that if you're dealing with any motors or coils, that it's a good idea to place a diode reverse biased in parallel with the motor or the relay coil. Hopefully you have a better understanding of why a diode is used in parallel with a relay coil or a motor to prevent back EMF high voltage spikes. If you enjoy this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, don't forget to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you.